Hi there. Happy Easter. Welcome to Jamaica Magazine. On today's show, we learn about our foods, calories and labels, plus medicinal plants and some fashionable jewelry. Thanks for joining us. I'm Adrian Atkinson. Sit back and relax with these and more to come. First up, a recap of the week's top stories right after this message. What can a little germs do? Pink eye running, belly even flu. Germs can make them happen to you. Put germs on a man as with these. Cover your mouth when you cough and sneeze. Always wash your hand with water and soap. Keep dirty hands from your eyes and your nose and your mouth. You don't want to be sick, take care, practice every day. No germs down here. A message from the Ministry of Health. Hi there, I'm Simone Wolf with your JIS News of the Week. Increases in all goods and services sectors are being credited for the 1.9% growth in the Jamaican economy in 2018. With us having growth occurring in all four quarters of 2018, the overall preliminary estimates for the calendar year indicated that the Jamaican economy grew by 1.9% during 2018. Jamaica has been ranked first in the region for its availability and usefulness of its statistical information, according to the latest Open Data International ranking. In 2016, Jamaica ranked 165 out of 173 countries, and now we're ranked at number 37. The improved ranking was a direct result of the work of Statin and our efforts at improving the coordination among the producers of official statistics in Jamaica. At least 100 pediatric heart surgeries are expected to be performed this year at the newly opened cardiac center at the Bustamante Hospital for Children as the health minister works to cut wait time for surgeries. With the team that we have and others to support that. And we're going to be building that up until we get to the stage where we can satisfy the demand that exists. Meanwhile, Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton is encouraging more private sector companies to step up and support the fight against non-communicable diseases. His comments came this week as he endorsed Food for the Poor's 5K Run Walk. And this is our third circuit, and this 5K Run on May 19th will represent the second of a five-race circuit involving a host of corporate entities. Last year, we had some 20 companies representing almost 2,000 employees participating in, the, in that circuit. The first run will be on May 5th. Of course, Food for the Poor on the 19th, June 2nd, June 16th, and July 14th. Minister of Science, Energy and Technology Favol Williams has lauded the JPS Foundation for offering an annual scholarship of $10,000 to a student seeking to pursue a degree in electrical engineering in Jamaica or elsewhere in the Caribbean. Now more than ever, our children need to be exposed to as much of the STEM areas as possible so that they can be equipped with the necessary skill sets and competencies to take advantage of the opportunities which will be an integral part of the fourth industrial revolution. Plans are in place to cater to children with special needs during this year's Child Month activities, which will be celebrated in May under the theme, Encourage, Enable, Include Me. These directives are applicable for all children and include an emphasis on children with special needs. Children with disabilities are one of the most marginalized and excluded groups of children experiencing widespread violation of their rights. Tourism Minister Edmund Bartlett has applauded visual artist Brian McFarlane for launching an art exhibition in honor of master sculptor, ceramist and teacher Jean Pearson, who died a year ago from a heart attack. Congratulations, Brian. This is your moment, and we want to thank you, and we want to celebrate you, and we want to say to you that you are a living example to all Jamaicans. He is a Maroon, from Maroon Town in Portland. 
So it's from Portland to the halls of academia, MIT, and my, my Boston University, and Massachusetts University, and you name it, and then latterly, China. And those are some of the stories making news this week. I'm Simone Wolf. Know your numbers and control the keys to a healthier heart. Know the numbers for your blood pressure, cholesterol level, blood glucose level, and your weight and body mass index. Find out the risks they represent and what you need to do to stay healthy. Talk to your doctor and start making healthy lifestyle choices to prevent a heart attack or stroke. We all get the urge to eat food and to drink as we get hungry and thirsty. As the body's call for energy and nutrients from our foods so that we can maintain our health and wellness. But how much of us think about the energy value of the foods we consume and the portions that are really required? Maybe not many. So let us begin to look at that right now. Your body needs energy, and we call this our daily requirements of calories. And for Jamaican men, it's about 2,100. For Jamaican women, it's about 1,900 calories per day. The calorie is just a unit of energy to say how much energy you need to get around your daily activities and so on. If you're more active and you're, you're not in a desk job, then you're going to burn more calories. If you go to work, when you get up in the morning, you sit in a car and you go to work, you sit in, uh, at a desk all day, and then lunchtime come, you order and they deliver the food to you. And then you eat that and you go back and sit again and then you sit in a, a bus or a car and you go home. So you're sitting all day, you're not doing much versus somebody who's on the road and they're walking around or they're standing all day like the teachers and nurses and so on. Then you'll realize the difference in how much energy you will need. And so if you are more active, you should be eating a little bit more. But the problem is that everybody is eating as if they're working in sugar cane fields, chopping cane all day. And this is the problem. So we consume more calories than we are burning off. And every day if we keep on consuming calories, you need 3,500 calories to make one pound of fat. One soda, if you look on the serving size for these things, these juices and so on, you'll think that, oh, it's just 110 calories. But how many servings come in that, that container? About three or two and a half. So you can easily drink 300 calories like that. And if you do that five times for the day, that's 1,500 calories. You almost don't need to eat anything else for the rest of the day. So the excess calories come in the body and then the body begins to store them as fat. And then you put on more weight and more weight. You have to watch the pastries and the breads and all of these things that people, even when they're vegetarian, they still have a lot of these little snacks and so on. These things are full of calories. You know that one, one of the, 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 the cream crackers is about 450 calories. Water crackers is about 500. Yeah, nobody don't want to hear. I never want to believe it either. But this is what you get, the, the, the big, the, the pack that you get. And a lot of people eat them with butter, right? So can you imagine how many calories you're putting in your body with one little snack? And you don't talk about the, the, the tea yet with the milk, the condensed milk and the sugar that you have to have that with. All of these things, they add up without you even knowing. The ingredients they will go from the most to the least in a product. So if, it's, if the product is making a claim, look at where that claim is if it is one, two, or three, because if it falls less than that, you're really not getting value for your money, right, in terms of content. The nutrition facts. One of the first things you're going to look at is the, um, the servings per container, and this says 2.5, which means it's two and a half servings in the container. You are not supposed to drink it, you must share it, right? And then you're going to look at your calories. It says 90 calories, but it's 90 calories per serving, and it's 2.5 servings. So it's 2.5 times 90, which comes out to about 225. And then you come down and you look at your sugar, and it's 22 grams of sugar. 
but it's per serving. So the entire container is 2.5 times 22, which works out about 55, 56 of my maths is right. And there's four grams equal one teaspoon. So you end up with about roughly 14 teaspoons of sugar. And that, that is, you use this template for all the products that have nutritional facts on them. This is 14 teaspoons of sugar. And the American Heart Association recommends that for an adult male, he con you're, you're supposed to consume nine teaspoons of added sugar per day. For an adult female, it is six teaspoons of added sugar per day. And for a child, it's less than six teaspoons per day. And a child here, we're talking about from two to 18 years old. Don't look at a container and judge it by the size alone. You have, it's very important to read the label so you know exactly. And look at it, 220 calories. For parents, we're, we're asking them you know, to be very mindful of how much sugar they're giving their kids, right? Because it impacts upon their health in the, not, in the long term. We try to provide information to parents and guardians, teachers, anyone about the alternatives to these sugary drinks because really you don't need them in your diet. You can get enough sugar that you need from your, the foods that you eat, the carbohydrates which are converted to sugars in your body which give you energy. So some of the alternatives are of course water, it's, um, it's the best one, but there's also fresh fruit juices. So blending your own juices without adding sugar and you'll have the natural sugars and fiber from the fruits. There's coconut water, it should be, um, you should actually drink this in moderation because it does have quite a, a high sugar content, um, but it is a good alternative. For the children, freezing the juices into popsicles or ice cubes so that it's more interesting for them to drink, as well as doing infused water. So infused water is, um, it's a process where you cut up your favorite fruit or vegetable or even mint leaves or aloe you place it in water overnight so that the, the vitamins, the minerals, all the goodness from the fruits and vegetables are infused into the water and you can have that. It's not sugar sweetened and it gives you the vitamins and minerals that you need throughout the day. And then for children, there's unsweetened milk. So not flavored milks like the chocolate milks, but unsweetened milk doesn't have a high sugar content and it also will give the children the calcium that they need for their growing bodies as well. You can lower your salt intake by checking the labels when buying processed and packaged foods. Compare products and choose the options lower in salt. A low salt option should have less than 120 milligrams of sodium per 100 grams of food. Reduce the salt and increase your consumption of fresh unprocessed foods. When cooking and at the table, use herbs, spices and other seasonings to give you great flavor and taste. A public service message from the Jamaica Information Service and the Ministry of Health. Jamaica's rich biodiversity has an important role in the country's growth and development. Many Jamaicans, past and present, have recognized its value. So too, institutions like the IOJ's Natural History Museum. Let's learn more in this next feature. Necessity is the mother of invention, and we had to find a way to survive. And so for the plants, the natural gift of the Creator, we could rely on it to guide us into what we needed to do. I didn't know about Fenzik and your pharmaceutical things. I know about bush, bush. So if I had a headache, I knew as a child that I should use the leaves of three mackerel bush and a piece of cloth and tie it on my head and the pain would go. The use of herbs as medicine. While this age-old practice has been overlooked by many, the Institute of Jamaica saw it fitting to mount an exhibition on medicinal plants of Jamaica and their uses, bringing to the present the medicinal habits used in the past. So at least 330 plants have been found growing in Jamaica have been identified as having medicinal value. 
of that 334, at least 193 have been assessed for their biochemical activities and 23 of those have, are actually endemic plants. Not every plant, though in its natural form is good, is accessible to everybody. And knowing the information about the plant and wanting to get that into the hands of the people, some of our scientists have begun to study extensively some of these plants to see how they can be formulated in such a way so that they can be packaged and be accessible to the public. You just don't wake up and say, Eureka, I have found it. They would have learned from the people in the community what plants were used for what purpose. So you, you, you know all those things in your, in your childhood because they were continually using the plants of nature to assist in what they were doing. Ever since I was a child, my mommy always said me to break a piece of bush to make tea if the tea bag run out. But what was I getting out of it? I had no clue. And sometimes people say it worked, some other people say it didn't work. So that's why I really did the research to find out if these plants actually work. So we started only making butter brush, which is also known as Calistemon viminalis. And then we broadened and we focused on lemongrass. We focused on most of the herbs that are used by native Jamaicans to cure different ailments. In addition to the showcase, students from the Dunrobin, Chetola Park and the Rollington Town Primary Schools were scientists for a day as they participated in one of the institution's monthly and afternoon with a scientist sessions. Modeled around the Ministry of Education's academic calendar, the mandate of the program is to expose students to and encourage an appreciation for different disciplines of science through fun-filled scientific activities. I've been promoting entrepreneurship, especially in the medicinal plant industry. So I, um, one of the things I do is to give back. So I volunteer even at my children's school. We have an entrepreneurial club where I teach them to make different products from plants. I learned that, that they can use herbs to make soap. It was very exciting because I got to see um, what dangerous chemicals they use in it and how is it how is it correct to go on the skin. First we had to put some coconut oil in like a metal cup then we had to put shea butter in it and melt it and then we put it in sodium hydroxide and it was very 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 hot. I spilled it a couple times but it was okay, just a little clean up. And it began to get thick, so I was like, what should I do now? And she was like, just mix it, it's normal. And then we got to put what we want in there. I put um, charcoal in there, and then I made a swirl in the mold. It was a very good experience. I'm so happy our students were able to participate in the activity held here at the Institute, where they learn more about medicinal plants I believe it's very important for them to know that the plants that are found right there in their backyards can be used for healing of ailments that they'll have, the common cold, whatever the, the, the ailments may be. This is what I would like to engage the people in. Go back to their communities and learn how people lived, a generation which came out of slavery, could neither read nor write, and yet they were able to contain themselves and to live. We want the students to have some respect for the heritage of this country because it is going to guide you to the future. On our roads, remember, Take time, be courteous, drive good, walk good. Don't drink alcohol and drive. Don't drive tired or sleepy. Don't tailgate and don't overtake unless it is safe to do so. And always drive at a speed which will allow you time to stop quickly and safely.
Let's keep it safe on our roads. Jamaicans know how to turn them hand and make fashion. And literally, you will see in this next feature how talented artisans have been using materials found in their environment to craft fashionable wares. Take a look. Droplets of beads, creatively designed metals, painted wood, all handcrafted to adorn the neck, face, or limbs. Made from natural resources found on the island, local costume jewelers are designing a niche for economic empowerment. Natural handbands. These are like from Lucky Seeds and RSI. And these bracelet is from copper with seed mixed in. And we have bamboo handband. We have leather handband over here. And we have wallets, sandals, and pipes and chalices. Natural, all handmade right here in Jamaica. I've been doing this business for over 40 years now. I've traveled all over the world. And this is the business that I do. This is my living, and I'm very proud of it. I was working at the post office for 18 years. But in the 18 years at the post office, I learned this trade. I'm self-taught. That's what I love about this. I think about a creative piece, and I manifest it with my hands. And that's what I love about it, manifesting what I think. So we have two lines here. Um, we have one called the Heavenlies, and then we also have um, another line that's completely made out of paper, crafted from scratch, um, hand-painted by a fine artist and varnished. And that one is called Inspired by Nature. And if you look at it, you'll see things that remind you of sunsets or hillsides and mountainous reliefs and fruits and flowers. We have some freshwater pearls, we have shells, we have upcycled, I would say, materials that we used to make the earrings, so paper. So, and we do a lot of seeds and shells, I work a lot with shells, so those sorts of things. I'm telling you this, we don't know how rich we are. We are a very rich country. I'd love if we could concentrate on developing our skills and using our local product and advance. We are so rich that it, it, it's confusing sometimes to see what we're doing. Some, some stupid things, killing each other, robbing each other. We don't have to do that. We have everything here. So we need to just concentrate and focus and be positive and use the things that we have because we have a lot. Just be more mindful of what you're doing every day and what you're using every day. You know, paper instead of plastic, that's kind of, you know, the stereotypical answer, but really thinking about where are you buying your products? Are you buying things that are locally made? Um, are you buying things that are imported more than the locally made? It's the season of Easter, the Christian holiday celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. But apart from this religious aspect, there are activities that have become tradition over the years. What are they? Let's find out. Easter, a holiday for some to relax on the beach with family and friends or just hang out at their favorite spots. But for Christians, the day, also known as Resurrection Sunday, takes on a deeper meaning. It marks the day when Jesus Christ rose from the dead. This, of course, followed the crucifixion of Jesus Christ three days before, which is called Good Friday. He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told while he was still with you in Galilee, the Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Easter Sunday is the culmination of the Passion of Jesus, preceded by Lent, a 40-day period of fasting, prayer, and penance. At the heart of the matter is God's love for humanity.
Over the years, a mixture of traditions and practices have been perpetuated, like placing egg white in a container of water on Holy Thursday night so that by Good Friday you will see your future. This is determined by the pattern which is formed by the coagulating egg white. Then there is the eating of bun and cheese. This custom dates back to Britain with the eating of hot cross buns on Good Friday. It's a small round slightly sweet bun made with a cross cut on the top which is understood as a symbol of the crucifixion, thus the name hot cross bun, which was only sold during specific times such as Good Friday. The British brought this custom when they settled in Jamaica. Though the practice has diminished in Britain, it is still prevalent here in Jamaica. Of course, we've added our spices to the bun mixture and a faithful partner, cheese. Bun and cheese is mainly eaten during the Easter holiday. There is also the practice of some Jamaicans to cut the physic knot or bleeding tree around midday on Good Friday. It is believed that the sap will seep a red substance that signifies the blood of Jesus. It's also believed that the crucifixion was carried out on a similar type of tree. Numerous churches are decorated with the Easter lily during the holiday. It's a plant which seems to appropriately bloom on Easter Sunday. The Easter lily symbolizes purity, innocence and virtue due to its snow-white color and white trumpet. Another custom is the exclusion of meat for the Lenten period. That's 40 days after Ash Wednesday, with fish being the main staple on many tables. On the board this week, the United Church in Jamaica and the Cayman Islands will host its 41st Biennial Synod in Montego Bay, St. James from April 30 to May 2. The opening service will be held on Tuesday, April 30 at the St. Paul's United Church. It starts at 10 a.m. For further information, call 876-926-8734. The Synod will see the gathering of ministers and council delegates of the Church who will determine the strategic direction of the Church, agree on policies and determine avenues for growth. Also on the Community Notice Board, the Emmanuel Apostolic Church at Brayton Parkway in Portmore invites members of the public to its Youth Week of activities. It will feature international guest speaker Obama Awardee and best-selling author Dr. Eddie Connor Jr. Sessions begin on Wednesday, April 24 and continue until Friday, April 26 at 7 p.m. nightly. Also, come out for an all-day Empowered to Win conference on Saturday, April 27, starting at 7 a.m. and on Sunday, April 28, starting at 11 a.m. For more information, call 876-704-4351-2. It's time to unwrap the gift within you. Sips Toastmasters Club, a club in good standing with Toastmasters International, continues to meet every second and fourth Thursday of the month. Upcoming meetings will be on Thursday, April 25 and Thursday, May 9. Meetings start at 5.45 p.m. at the College of Insurance, 3A Richmond Avenue, Kingston 10, across from Webster Memorial on Halfway Tree Road. You may contact Annette Robotham at 876-929-3340 for any additional information. Also on the notice board this week, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade is inviting Jamaicans in the diaspora and at home to view a draft of the National Diaspora Policy and provide written feedback. The policy is on the Ministry's website. Feedback is to be sent to diasporapolicy at mfaft.gov.jm by Friday, May 17, 2019. And that's all for our community notices this Saturday. If you have something to share on our notice board, give us a call at 876-922-8680 or email cbishop at jis.gov.jm or kferguson at jis.gov.jm. This is where we end our half of a journey inside Jamaica Magazine this Easter weekend. But not to worry, you can also watch our programs online at jis.gov.jm or subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also find us on all social media platforms. On behalf of the entire production team, I'm Adrian Atkinson, wishing for you a peaceful and safe holiday.
This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.